I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the very basics of what we're discussing here tonight, and we'll get a little bit more complex as the other speakers come in. But I'll keep, I, we want to keep it very simple so people get the concept of what we're talking about. Advanced healthcare directives, as we often describe them as, as living wills, are, and they're nothing more than a document that you would write today that allows you to keep control of what treatments you would choose if you no longer had the capacity to decide. And I think that's something we must keep at the back of our minds when we're listening to all of this discussion tonight. It is, gives you nothing more than you already have when you have the capacity to make the decisions for yourself right now. This is not about euthanasia. It is not about assisted suicide. And we have to emphasize that. This is not about those issues. A living will gives you no more or no less control than you have right now to decide what medical treatments you would choose right now if for any reason you ended up in hospital. As a patient right now, if you went into hospital, you can decide whether you want to have surgery, you can decide whether you want to have chemotherapy, you can even decide whether you want to take the antibiotics that a doctor prescribes for a chest infection. The choices remain yours. And all a living will does is it gives you some control over that sort of decision making when you no longer have the capacity to make that decision yourself. I want everybody in this room now to think, if you go forward, say, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and for some reason you're diagnosed with dementia, what would you like me to do as a doctor if for any reason you got one of those serious medical conditions? Because unless you express that decision to somebody, I'd have to make that decision on your behalf. You have to let your family know, and you have to let someone know how that decision will be made on your behalf. And that's where living wills come in, because you have the opportunity to express exactly what you would like to have done for you. Well, I'm really delighted that we've moved this on so far at this, from the legislative point of view. A couple of years ago, when I actually wrote the private member's bill around uh, living wills, very few of my colleagues in Dáil Éireann actually knew what they were about. Uh, even I myself actually didn't realise how much work had already been done on this in, in Ireland. Uh, Patricia Rickard Clark, who was a, a chairperson, wasn't it, of the Law Reform Commission, I think has 20 years experience around uh, advanced health care directives. Uh, and even when I, when I was published this bill, and when it went through the second stage in the Dáil, I was then asked by the minister would I withdraw my bill because he wanted to bring forward uh, the very same sort of uh, issues that we, were, we, we had in, in the bill that I produced. He wanted to bring it into another piece of legislation that's been brought forward by Minister Shatter at this moment in time. And it was on that occasion that I met with Dr. Siobhan O'Sullivan. And uh, Siobhan told me that in the bioethics unit within the Department of Health, they had also been working a couple, for a couple of years on this very issue. And again, I wasn't aware of that. So I think what is extremely important about this issue now is that we're very much bringing it into the public forum where it can be discussed by everybody. Uh, and by the end of this year, advanced health care directives or living wills will have legislative standing in this country. Uh, the, the consultation process is going on at this moment in time. And of course, then it, it will come in through the debates in the door like it normally does. Uh, and, and, and we will refine it even more. Uh, but I think what, what we really want people to take from this is to keep the whole issue around living wills very simple. They're just, just, you, when you hear the discussion tonight, you'll hear an, an awful lot of discussions about how complex it can be. You know, if you assign somebody to look after your living will for you, uh, that person be, will that person be just somebody who's interpreting your decision? Or will that, will that be some person who will actually maybe say, oh no, that's not what you would like. It's something completely different. Uh, there's going to be a whole load of complexities. So before we start this discussion tonight, I want you to keep it as, I want you to keep in your own minds how simple this is about. This is just about you keeping control of over events that may happen to you towards the end of your life when you no longer have that capacity. And that capacity may be taken away from you because you may have dementia, Alzheimer's, you may have a severe stroke, and you may, you may be in what we call a, a vegetative state, so you can make that decision. 
So it's how you can now make those decisions for yourself to say, if any of these things happen to me, this is what I want done and this is what I don't want done. And I think that's, that, is, that is the most important thing that I want people to take away from, from here tonight. Uh, we have, um, we, when this, um, just to give to the outlook of how this legislation will go through Dáil Éireann. The, the legislation that I passed was withdrawn uh, under instructions that the Ministers already pointed out. There is another piece of legislation about capacity that's going through at the, uh, that will go through the Dáil next month. It's the second stage of this legislation. It's been published and will start in Dáil Éireann under, under the Minister for Justice, Mr Alan Shatter. When it goes to committee stage, and this is where we often refine legislation at committee stage, we are going to introduce the advanced healthcare directives. Uh, and it, it'll be discussed at committee stage, and we're hoping then that in the report stage, when that goes through Dáil Éireann, that it will actually get legislative standing. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not coming here tonight to go through all the real intricacies of this legislation. I'd like to keep that very much for the questions and answers part. Uh, but I, I really want everybody here now, as you're sitting here tonight, to just keep it very simple about what the concept of this is. And if there's one thing I'd ask you all to do is, go, when you go home, talk to your family members about what advanced healthcare directors are. Because even just raising that topic, just discussing that issue, often helps doctors and helps your family members to, make, to help that decision-making process if anything, God forbid, were to happen to you where you can no longer make that decision. And if, you, if at all possible, take that 30 minutes where you can write, put in writing what you would like to see happen if for any reason you did not have that capacity <coughs> next year, five years' time, or 20 years' time if anything serious were to happen to you. It is that simple. Just take that 30 minutes some time. Write up your living will. Because within the next five to six months, that living will will have the backing of the law of this country, if, if, if for any reason it ever needs to be looked at, by your doctors or by your family in years to come, if anything serious were to happen to you. I am very much supporting this and I'm very much pushed it, pushing this from the very personal experience that I have myself as a doctor. I have managed to use my role as a TD to get this on the statute books and with the help of absolutely everybody when, when, in, in, within Dáil Éireann. But it was my experience as a doctor that, that really made me go forward for this. I have seen situations where uh, an elderly person who is suffering from dementia uh, gets a serious illness that serious illness could be cancer, uh, or, uh, and the family then come to me and they say, what do you think we should do with my mum or with my dad? <coughs> and I said, well, have you not discussed it between yourselves? And they said, well, some of our family wants to do surgery, some of our family say we should, do, we should leave mum be or we should leave dad be, and they said, but we can't agree on it, uh, and we want you to make that decision. Uh, and I don't know their mum and dad better than they know them. So that decision shouldn't really be mine either. And it, in, in, in a, an event like this can be often very traumatic for the family anyway, when they're seeing the maybe the end of life of a, of a loved one. Uh, and, and a very simple one-page letter, if it had been written by that family member, or even if it had been discussed by their mum and dad before they, know, they, they lost their capacity to have this discussion, would have taken away all of that trauma. And I think that uh, I think this, it is actually very important that we actually try to not just promote um, assisted, uh, these living wills, but I actually think it's very important that we also give it the legislation that it requires. In other jurisdictions like the United States of America, up to 40% of the population has a living will. And Everybody in this room, or at least everybody in this room, should have a, what we call an ordinary will, where you would actually say how you'd like to see your assets distributed in, in the event of your debt. And I think it's very easy for everybody in this room just to put with that a living will to say what should happen in the, in, in the very last days of your life, uh, what should happen to you if you no longer have that capacity and make it so much easier for your family uh, when that day comes. 
and I think that's why we're promoting this. And I and I really do like and ask you to go out uh, and talk to, talk about this to your family and friends, so that we can actually get that critical momentum going in regards to discussion on all of this. And I would also ask you that you would maybe send in your submissions uh, to the Department of Health, or you can even send them in through through my uh, my office in in, in, in Dáil Éireann, and I'd send them to the Department of Health. Uh, any, any views that you may have on advanced healthcare directors because I, I, there's a great process going on at the moment on how this is being discussed and every, everybody's views would be very, very, very welcome. That's all I'm saying on this. You're going to get some very detailed and excellent presentations coming from the other speakers uh, and after that we'll have a questions and answers session uh, on, on this issue. Good. Thank you very much for your time.